in many body quantum machine. Victor, please. 15 plus 5. Thank you, Giuseppe, and thank you, the organizers, for organizing this conference and uh, giving me the opportunity to present our work here. Uh, so I'll be talking about optimal control in uh, many body quantum machines. So is it fine, the audio? Yeah, I was wondering if I should. Uh... Recording in progress. Okay. So. Okay, so I'll be talking about optimal control in uh, many body quantum machines. Uh, so this is a work that uh, I'm, we are currently doing in collaboration with uh, my collaborators Sai Vinjanampathy and Ajinka Vadulkar in IIT Bombay. And uh, we are kind of like, uh, hopefully it will be done in a few more weeks. So what I mean by optimal control is, say we have a generic uh, system with a some generic Hamiltonian HT, which is can be written as a sum of two parts, say H0 and H1, which are in general say, time independent. And uh, H1 is something that we cannot control, and H0, say, is the control parameter, which we control through, the, uh, through this Turing parameter lambda t. Now, we start at some initial time t in, at some arbitrary initial state psi in. The state psi t of the system at any time t should evolve according to the Schrodinger equation and it depends on lambda t. And uh, the final target is we want to reach at some, uh, say some particular final state at final time tf. And so the problem that we are looking at is find the optimal form of lambda t subject to certain constraints which maximizes or minimizes uh, some target function example energy at the final time tf. So the problem is very general. It is just a very uh, like a basic uh, optimization problem. Now, there are different kinds of optimization. The kind that we'll be looking here is uh, something called crab optimization, in which we say that uh, no matter what the target is, what the problem is, uh, let's say we uh, write this lambda t tuning parameter as a Fourier series. Why? Because uh, in principle, any arbitrary function can be written as a Fourier series. Uh, so for, uh, I mean, large enough number of frequencies. So this A, R, B, R, omega, these are the Fourier coefficients and Fourier frequencies. And we take only, say, finite number of frequencies given by this M. And ST is some parameter which is zero at initial and final time and one in between. It just makes sure that the control pulse is uh, constant at initial and final times. So the optimization protocol is, we numerically optimize A R, B R, omega R to generate an optimal pulse which minimizes a target function which can be energy, which can be fidelity something, subject to certain constraints, for example, the strength of control. That is what is the maximum amplitudes of A R, B R, omega R say. So we start from an initial guess pulse, uh, A R, B R, omega R and find F and then search for a new set of A R, B R, omega R which reduces F and we repeat the process. And the expectation is after many iterations, we should reach the optimal set of AR, BR, omega, which minimizes F. Now, all these are very basic, like optimization problem, everything is fine. But the problem comes when you want to optimize a many body system. The reason is, the Hilbert space dimension goes as exponentially with the system size, it is two to the power of N. So that to find the optimal pulse for a many body system, it also can be expected to increase exponentially. And it is even more, I mean, it is a generic problem in any quantum mechanical uh, setting, but even more so in optimization, because in optimization it needs many, several trial and error basis. So the question is how can we find optimal pulse for many body quantum systems? And this is a very important problem also for say quantum technologies when you want to make optimal quantum machines, many body quantum machines. So the solution we are proposing is Let's say we find the optimal pulse for a few body system, which can be done, say, within a few minutes or a few hours. And then if we can use that same optimal pulse for a scaled up system size. Now, this is, of course, seems uh, too good to be a solution to be applicable in all cases. However, in some cases, for example, say quantum phase transitions, which are just phase transitions that occur at absolute zero temperature due to quantum fluctuations, and uh, it should, uh, we think that it should be applicable. And there are other things like collective coupling in which say many body system acts like a single, uh, many spins act like a single large spin. But today I'll be talking about only about quantum phase transitions. And the application of this method uh, can be done in several quantum machines like say quantum batteries, quantum heat engines. But uh, now I'll be talking only about quantum batteries. Uh, 
how we can apply this kind of method in to optimize many body quantum batteries. Uh, before I go to quantum batteries, let me let me just uh, just uh, I mean maybe may not, most of you already are aware, but uh, let me just remind you that these dynamics of quantum phase transitions uh, that depends on something called the adiabatic impulse approximation, which basically says is say we are tuning this parameter lambda d that I introduced before. Say there is a critical point at lambda is equal to lambda c. So if we quench if we change lambda the system evolves adiabatically away from the critical point while non-adiabatic excitations result close to criticality. So what it means is the energy gap between the ground state and the first excited state, that is the delta, it, it goes to zero at lambda is equal to lambda c. So there is a, because of time energy uncertainty relation, there is an inherent time scale, that is one by delta, which diverges close to the critical point, shown here. And uh, the Kibble-Zurek mechanism, which is very much relevant for this kind of uh, systems driven out of equilibrium, quantum uh, critical systems driven out of equilibrium. So what we say is there is a, another time scale associated with the change of Hamiltonian, that is delta by delta dot, and there is a competition between these two time scales. So whichever wins, like away from the critical point, when this delta is large, the system evolves adiabatically, but when this second time scale takes over, it, uh, there are excitations. And this lambda one hat, which can be or the t hat, that is the time at which we get the boundary, can be solved from this equation and which basically gives the Kibble-Zurek scaling, which says how much excitations or how much defects are there. Here tau is the rate of quench, say, and this new d is the dimension, nu z are the critical exponents. So this is the basic, uh, this dynamics of quantum phase transitions. And we will be using these dynamics to study quantum batteries. Now quantum batteries are just batteries made with quantum systems. Like classical batteries, they store energy. So the quantifying performance is given by ergotropy, which is the work capacity. That is uh, the energy minus energy minimum at the same entropy, which basically means how much work we can extract from a battery. And so the question that we ask is, what is the optimal way of charging a many body quantum battery that is which will maximize this ergotropy? Now the kind of systems that we'll be using is, uh, I mean, any system can be used, but as examples, uh, say we can take an integrable model, which can be like this XY model, which is basically there are ferromagnetic interactions along X and Y direction, and there can be a transverse field along the Z direction, and this HT is the tuning parameter, which we will uh, control to charge the battery. And there is phase transition at H is equal to plus minus one. Or we can have a non-integrable model, uh, which basically means that the integral model can be written in terms of non-interacting momentum modes, but in non-integrable model cannot be written like that. And here also we can have a ferromagnetic interaction along Z and field along X and Z. And again, HT is the tuning parameter and we have phase transition at gamma is equal to one, H is equal to zero. So these are just two examples of quantum battery models. Now, as I said, uh, we can charge the battery by changing this HT. Now let's see how we can charge it. In this left uh, figure, this red dashed line says that the HT we are changing linearly, we are increasing linearly and again decreasing. This is the green is the quantum critical point, quantum phase transition. So the ergotropy, that is the energy that is excited, uh, excitations are shown by this red curve. This is in the integrable model. So it increases and then finally saturates to this uh, value. However, if instead we use this crab optimization and optimize this HT, then we get a very uh, strange like a pulse, this blue curve, and then we see that the ergotropy increases, decreases, and finally saturates to a value which is much higher, like four times almost higher. And this is done for 100 qubits. We could optimize for 100 qubits because it is an integrable model which has, uh, which basically the number of degrees of freedom just is uh, linearly proportional to the system size. So we could do the optimization for 100. However, this cannot be possible for a non-integrable system in which the Hilbert space dimension, the number of variables increases expo exponentially with the system size. So we ask, can we use the optimal pulse, say for 10 qubits, which can be done in a matter of minutes or hours, to improve the performance of a 100 qubit quantum battery? If we can do so, it will solve a huge problem, that is how to uh, optimize, like. Uh, Hilbert uh, systems, which has a very large Hilbert space. Now, to, uh, the problem can be complicated because the pulse that we, are be, that we will use is a very complicated pulse. It can be the summation of different elements. 
A or B or omega or we don't know. These are something that is optimization protocol gives us. However, nevertheless, we can still use the Kibble's rate mechanism to try to answer this question. What we can say is this delta T, that is the energy gap, is always a function of this uh, coefficients and the time and the rate of quench, the tau. So this Kibble's rate mechanism is always valid even in this case, and we can say that there is this competition between the inherent time scale and the time scale at which the, we are changing the parameter. And from this, again, we can get this T hat, uh, that is the impulse to adiabatic transition line. And the important crucial thing is this T hat is independent of system size as, well, as long as the system size is much larger than the correlation length, close to the criticality. This nu is the correlation length exponent, and the lambda is the distance from the critical point. So from there, uh, there, and we can also say that the normalized ergotropy, that is the energy uh, work capacity of the battery, is a function of the probability of excitations and the normalized Hamiltonian. So uh, basically with these kind of calculations, what the basic, the main message is that normalized ergotropy can be expected to be independent of system size for an arbitrary pulse. And the uh, implication of this can be understood from these two plots. This is for an integrable system. The x-axis is time, and the y-axis is the number of spins. So as can, and this is the, argo, we are plotting the ergotropy. As can be seen, for a single time, as we keep on increasing the number of spins for a particular single pulse, the ergotropy basically remains the same. The, it is shown by the color. So even if we keep on increasing spins, the, ergot, the normalized ergotropy, that is the ergotropy divided by the maximum possible ergotropy, uh, that normalized ergotropy remains the same. And even more, uh, like remarkably, it can be seen in this uh, plot for non-integrable system, this right-hand plot, which is uh, for this non-integrable model in which what we did was the x-axis is the number of spins. So we have, say, a five-spin battery. We, normal, we optimize it. We get the optimal pulse for the five-spin five spin battery, which can be found in a matter of minutes. Now we use the same pulse, however, keep on increasing the size of the battery. Now what we see is these green and blue curves are uh, yellow and uh, the green curves, these are IO from the critical point. What we see is if we just use the five pulse, five qubit pulse for uh, seven, eight, or 10 qubits, it very rapidly decreases the ergotropy. So what it means is a pulse that we got optimized for five qubits is not good enough for 10 qubits or 15 qubits. So scaling up of uh, quantum machines is a, pro is a problem here. However, the picture changes uh, significantly close to criticality. Here, this blue curve is for quantum critical battery. Here, again, we, op give the op we optimize for a five qubit battery and then keep on increasing the battery size. However, the pulse still works good even for 10, 15, or up to 17 qubits. So what it shows is how we can optimize a many body quantum machine. So just to, I mean, just to summarize this result, these five spins, means there are 32 variables. So we op optimize a problem which contains 32 variables. Then we use that solution to optimize a spin chain, optimize a battery which contains 17 spins, that is uh, 131,000 uh, variables. So if we do just brute force method, this uh, many body quantum battery, this 17 qubit will take a few weeks to optimize 17 qubit quantum battery. However, because of this uh, quantum critical region, we can uh, optimize it within a matter of minutes by optimizing a five qubit battery. Okay. And uh, so just a uh, uh, couple of more things for this integrable case, actually the problem might be a little bit uh, easier because in integrable we have, uh, if for the integrable many body system of size n, we have n non-interacting quasi particles. So a pulse which is optimal for quantum battery of size n works for n prime much, much greater than n as well, even i from quantum critical points, because in integrable systems, they're kind of non-interacting modes. However, uh, so the conclusion is that say we aim to optimize a quantum critical machine for, of size n much, much greater than one. Here I have only shown a battery, but this uh, theory should work for any arbitrary machine or any arbitrary quantum system. Now. The question is how to find a pulse. So the way we do it is we find a pulse for a system or a quantum machine of size n prime, which is much, much less than n. Because this n for a large n, the Hilbert space dimension is large, so optimization is not a practical thing. However, we can always optimize for n prime much, much less than n. Then we use the same optimal pulse for this n-body quantum machine. 
and this should work in close to quantum critical points, and the advantage is significant reduction in optimization time of quantum machines or many body quantum systems. And uh, what it shows is quantum phase transitions are highly advantageous for optimal control of many body quantum machines. So, thank you. Thank you, Victor. Uh, questions? Daniel. <clears throat> uh, the five and, uh, excuse me? Hello? Hello? Ah, online. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, please. Ah, okay. The, the five and uh, 17 uh, qubit example that you had. Uh, so, um, how, uh, have you, uh, is it possible to actually do the optimization for seven, 17 spins? Uh, Right, so uh, not, I mean, here we used a trial of technique, so which uh, kind of, instead of take looking at the whole Hilbert space, we just take only a few relevant eigenvectors. So it might not be possible to do, uh, to do optimization using exact diagonalization, but with some techniques like trial of technique, some approximate optimization can be done. But uh, it is, for 17 it can be done, but we can also say have a 50 qubit machine, in which case maybe the, those techniques will fail. So in that case, we need to optimize for this five spin and then uh, use it for this mini spin. Oh, no, I was curious how close the the value between uh, using the uh, the parameters from the five spin case is to the exact value in the seven spin. Oh uh, yeah, case. so right. We, we are looking at this. It won't be exact, right? It won't be exact. We are looking at that, uh, but uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I am not claiming that it is ex uh, it is exactly matching. However, uh, it, is, it gives a very good result. That is the thing. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a basic question about your, your setup. So since you, you were talking about batteries, I was expecting to hear the word work. Uh, and you're using ergotropy in, instead, which seems like oil capacity. Okay, yeah. but you're defining it as, essentially as the residual energy. Is exactly. what I would call that yes. quantity. Exactly. Uh, so what about traditional work? Uh, do you have any, any results for what you would get out of, a, let's say, a Carnot cycle with this kind of a system? Right. So, I mean, it is same as traditional work, but in quant heat engines, what happens is the work is like we are getting from external heat births. So there can be non-unitary dynamics. But here, all, everything is, we are at, at present, we are looking at unitary dynamics only. But is, is your goal to... Maximize the ergotropy, minimize it? Like exactly, that. maximize. Usually in quantum annealing, say, we minimize the residual energy, but here it is the opti opposite way, how to maximize it. So what is your initial state? Is it the ground state of uh, a given Hamilton? Yes, we do the ground state. So ground state what, at H is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, what about the excited states for, for uh, initial state? Uh, your conclusion? I have to think about it because usually most of these quantum uh, critical dynamics are... Uh, ground state. Mm, yeah. I, okay, I would guess even for excited states it should work because it, the main thing that it uses is the correlation length diverges close to criticality. So I don't think it should re depend on the initial state. But I have to think about it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Other questions? The question online? Can, can you open the chat? Okay, hi, Victor. Uh, how about the optimization methods? Will they be same as CRAB that you used here? Uh, uh, other optimization methods, uh, I would guess so, because the CRAB is just a technique that we are using to optimize, but the main uh, theory that we are using is that the correlation length diverges close to criticality and kibble zirat mechanism. That should be independent of what uh, optimization scheme we are using. Okay, other questions? Uh, 
I did not quite get uh, how this um, scaling is actually working. So how can you use the same method that you're using for five qubits for 50 qubits or more? So uh, close to criticality, what happens is that this energy gap goes to zero between the ground state and the first excited state. And from there, the time scale diverges because of the time energy uncertainty relation. Similarly, one can show that uh, like uh, there is a corresponding length scale which also diverges close to criticality. So this is the property of this quantum critical point phase transition. Okay, good. I think we can move. Let's thank uh, Victor again.